Hello everyone! Welcome to another episode with IT Career Talk with Professionals. And today we have a Chief Technology Officer. So my guest today is Andre Navarro. Sir Andre, can you say hi to our audience? Hi guys! Uh, Andre Navarro from Bookie. Uh, glad to be here. Glad to be here uh, joining Rafi on his podcast. Right. So Sir Andre, let's... Um, can you please describe to us what a CTO or you know what a chief technology officer uh, role is? Mm -hmm. um, at the very basic level, it's someone who is responsible for all of the technology for an organization, right? So in my case, uh, I need to make sure that the tech uh, backing our company is sound and working as expected um if i can ask now sometimes in different stages of the company i would say mm -hmm. as a cto you need different set of skills no maybe in the early right. days as a cto you're the main developer right mm -hmm. and then later on uh, as the company progress maybe you're the main trainer or right. and, and moving forward no? um so what skills uh, do you think uh, and what value uh, you need to have to become a CTO. Right. So, so you're right that in different stages of the company, um, what you need to do as CTO really changes, right? Uh, a lot of the CTOs that I know, they really started out as, like myself, the first developer of the company, right. the one who was tasked to build the very first prototypes of the product that they were releasing. Um, as you evolve the company, um, it comes the, the role becomes less and less technical and more about managing people, more about managing expectations, more, more about managing timelines. Um, so a, a skill I would say that is needed uh, towards the journey is being, adaptable or being able to learn very quickly because what you'll do this day might be different from what you need to do the next day right right no? and uh, you mentioned about uh, having uh, management skills now how would you describe mm -hmm. your management style um I, I try to be a manager that um you know if i was the one being managed mm -hmm. um someone who i could you know, look up to or someone who I could respect, right? So I just try to be a manager that uh, try to manage my people in the same way that how I want myself to be managed, if that makes any sense. Hmm. Interesting. And how do you want to be managed? That's a good um, question. <laughs> it's, really, it's really about being honest, right? Hmm. Um, um, whether news is good or bad um if you can come across or if you can be honest um with the people you manage um and honor your commitments or be honorable in doing um in leading them then i think uh you know that that would be good for any any team right right um so you did mention honest now is that same as transparent or that would be a little bit different well transparent is just laying everything out there in terms of data right mm. um when i say honest it's not just transparency it's also about uh openness right mm. they they understand that even though um you're in a managerial position or you're in a leadership position um you're, you're still human as well, right? right? So right. it's it's okay to be honest about that. It's okay to be honest about how you feel. It's okay to be honest about uh, what the state is of the company or if uh, there's bad news that needs to be uh, said, right? So um, not just a tr transparency, but just being open, right? And is this how you also deal with the unexpected no? or any you know anything like you know like for example for us 
a lot of our companies had to change no given the mm-hmm. situation the current situation um is that also how you approach things when they go awry or you know difficult <laughs> Yeah, when when something doesn't go according to plan, um, yeah, you can only plan uh, or prepare as much, right? But when um, the day comes where uh, something happens, um, for, for me, it's really just like what's the quickest action that you can do um, that can at least solve this particular unexpected problem or unexpected issue and then um, if it solves it even for uh, a minute or even for you know a a little while you just um, iterate and uh, continue analyzing that problem until you get until you get to know it more right until that unexpected or all of the unknown things become uncovered Parang ano nga to, uh, parang hot fix na no? hot fix until the oh, next release. Oh, parang ganyan. Oh. Uh, oh. Hot fix muna ha, uh, pag-aralan para ma-release later oh. on. Oh. 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 Eh, pero itindihin mo muna of yung course, of problema, course. Oh. diba? And uh, it could be na part lang ng problema yung itindihin mo, pero you've been able to solve that first aspect of it. Right. right? Um, you did mention that, you know, uh, now that there's a lot of managerial, depending on the stage of the company, And mm-hmm. you still do uh, coding, no? Given all of these years, as you are already, uh, your company's a, a little mature, na, no? And it's been there for quite some time. So mm-hmm. you still code, and if you do, what's your stack? Um, not not as much as I want. Uh, in the past few years, a lot of what I've been doing is. Um, Um, drawing on a whiteboard, drawing boxes on a whiteboard. Uh, so that's dealing with more uh, on the high level. Um, there are chances or instances when I try to dive uh, into the code. Uh, but as you know, um, it, it needs momentum. Eh? So it's right. not something that you can just jump in and do, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure the developers who are working day to day on a code base will be able to uh, change things much faster than I can, right? Um, but yeah, it's really been more on looking at the high level of things, looking at uh, architecture, looking at uh, yeah how the different systems that we have connect together. Um, you, you asked about our stack. Um, When I started building Buki before, um, we we started with a backend on Ruby on Rails, which which a lot of startups uh, have done, right? And just because um, you're able to iterate uh, quickly on it. Um, more recently, um, we've shifted to um, TypeScript on the front end and um, combination of Uh, Go, uh, Ruby, some JavaScript on the back end. Right, right. Siguro, if I can ask lang, just a personal opinion. Mm-hmm. Um, every when does the code base need to be refactored? Parang like a major overhaul. Uh, is that, you know, uh, is that like, you know, if you look at the very old systems, the mga financial systems, mm-hmm. right? They're still running on right. mobile. Technically, right. like, Uh, refactoring for them takes years, no? Even some, some right. decade, no? For yung mga modern right. applications now, um, how often uh, do you think uh, it's healthy to refactor? Um, if you ask an uh, engineering person or a developer person, it's it's a constant thing, right? They always want to refactor. They always want to improve um, the code base. Um, If you balance that from like the business side, um, as long as it's solving the problem, then we shouldn't change it, right? It's like it's production tested code. Um, so for me, it, it really depends. It's hard. That's a hard question. That's a tough question. Right. right. Um, um, for me, the the correct time to refactor is when it's no longer. 
uh, servicing the needs of the end user in an efficient way. Right. So if it's getting slow or if features are being rolled out too slowly, that's um, um, But again, uh, if it's a timeline, if, if I could, right? If it was possible, I'd rewrite it at every chance that I can. Right. I'm sure you know the feeling yeah, yeah, yeah. where you just want to start from scratch again, right? Correct, correct, correct. Um, you know, speaking from starting from scratch, let's start from scratch mm-hmm. in terms of your journey. No? Um, how did you enter the IT sure. space? Like, um, you know, when you were a teenager, or did, was it something you really wanted to enter into? Or was this like, you know, mm-hmm. a family decision? Or... Did you have like a role model or maybe even like a movie that you watch and you said, wow, parang ang, ang cool ng guy na yun and uh, I want to follow them. So what, what, was your, what was your inspiration and journey like? Sure. Uh, I, my experience with, with computers um, was really like a lot of um, kids in the 90s. So I was a 90s kid. Um, my dad had a computer for his business right and the computer was at home um and um when i got the chance i just uh tinkered with it you know with the help of you know some uh titos who knew about computers um learned to uh navigate uh, DOS pa yun dati. Wala pang Windows. Um, learned a bit of uh, QBasic, right? As, uh, you know, as uh, an early programming language. Um, but I really liked how I was able to, I guess, explore my creativity using using the computer, right? Um Um, you can think about it as parang for, for me it, it, it it's like yun yung naging art ko right kasi hindi naman ako magaling magdrawing uh, uh, i found a way to express that art through computers right right And so i decided to um, take up a uh, take up MIS in college um, where i got exposed to the more formal training around programming and technology. Right. You know, yung, uh, speaking about art, no, parang naalala ko mm. lang, yeah, I think because hindi nga tayo always, like you said, no, parang there's also an art in create a diamond mm. using a for loop, mga ganun, no, create mm, a triangle, mm. di ba? Mm. Right? So parang may visual effect din, na parang, uy, kaya mm. kong itong mag-drawing, drawing, mm. konti, we see new groups, mga parang ganun. Right. Wala lang, yan, na, nakwento ko lang, kasi I think that's how I also got into uh, Uh, programming, no? Doon na mag-start mm-hmm. yun, no? Parang yun yung f- mga first few exercise. Create a star, create a, oh. create a diamond, create a square, mga gano'n. Oh. No? We're using two lines only or three lines. Right. So, for, for me, it's it's the creative outlet, eh, even until now. Um, it's the creative outlet of building something, right? It's building something from scratch, whether it's an app na visual or whether it's a back end na sobrang elegant. That's why I like the term parang when you say your code is very elegant or your system looks very elegant because there's there's uh yeah there's an art associated with it. Eh. There's a uh, creativity that you put in to build that. So you took up now uh MIS, right? And yes. um, how was that for you? And why MIS? Not not computer science, computer engineering. Or other, um, other courses like maybe math, statistics, or other courses here? Yeah. Sure. Um, we came from a very um, business-oriented family. So I was very interested in that business aspect as well. So when I saw MIS as a course, it was a course that combined um, the technical side, CS, and the management side. So I felt like... Um, that was a good fit for what I wanted to do. Um, I could still explore a lot on the technical side, while at the same time learning about something that I didn't know, 
which was the management uh, aspect. Right, right. Oh. Um, and how was the MIS classes for you? Like, did you have, did you find it relatively easy, hard? Mm -hmm. The programming classes, uh, yeah, um, I I would say I did well. Um, and I had fun. I had fun doing the technical courses. Um, the, the management courses, I enjoyed as well, but I, I would say um, I wasn't as skilled there, right? Um, yeah, but uh, I graduated, so I, I guess I'm okay. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, ito na, you're, you've graduated na, no? Um, mm -hmm. How did you pick your first job? Ito, point, sometimes this is a, a very important stepping stone in our career, mm -hmm. no? Because our first job mm -hmm. uh, could define our entire career sometimes. So how did right. you pick up your first uh, job? No? What were you looking at? And uh... Right. So back when I was in college, um, um, there was already a... A, an idea of the startup culture uh -huh. and it was really mostly mostly Google right uh -huh. so just to give I guess context or just so you can visualize what time this was this is around 2005 so I graduated 2005 um, and it, it attracted me to work at a place um, that uh, cared more about the output or uh, that wasn't too formal. Because like I said, uh, my family was very uh, business oriented. A lot of them um, were, I guess, executives at, at corporate uh, jobs. Um, initially, I didn't want to do that. I wanted something more, uh, more, it's more like a startup, right? Where it was, uh, more relaxed, more uh, fun, uh -huh. right? And so I tried to look for my first job. Uh, I tried to look for an environment that was like Google, right? Or I tried to look uh, for a startup environment. Um, and so the first uh, company I joined was a company called FBM Software. Um, I would say they were a uh, mid stage startup now at that time they were around 100 employees already right um working on um anti-spyware software security software um the ceo of that uh funnily enough is actually the current uh ceo of xenia health now if you know ah. xenia david put yeah so my first job was with him um, and so there I fell in love with the startup vibe, the startup uh, culture, um, and I, I became obsessed with it, obsessed uh, with just being better at technology, obsessed with learning everything that I could get my hands on. Um, and what was I your would position be... here? Oh. Um, I started as a uh, web developer, web right? Developer. So writing writing ASP.NET uh, at that time, um, ASP.NET and JavaScript at that time. Um, uh, yeah, eventually um, the management side of MIS came in handy um, because I was able to help lead teams in that company you know use the the people skills the soft skills picked up on the management side to help lead uh technical people right right um yeah i, I during those times i was really immersed and very uh passionate about technology like um the even on the hours that i wasn't working I was still coding. I was still reading about tech. Um, yeah. Right. And uh, when did you feel like you know you you've already uh, you you're ready to move on to your next step? No, this is something also 
uh, people in our in their first company sometimes either they stay very mm-hmm. long or they stay very short. So there's always that mm-hmm. sense of when when uh, when did you decide that hey it's time to move on? Mm. Right. Um, so after after um, FPM for. Uh, for whatever reason, I'm not gonna get into the reasons. Uh, I, I I moved to another company, uh, a startup as well. Uh, um, um, but uh, I guess on that startup aspect, um, um, I was already getting I guess questions or uh, uh, not naman arguments, pero um, my my parents didn't really quite get. Uh, the startup lifestyle and the startup vibe, um, and so um, for me, naman, that's the only kind of work I knew, and that's the work I knew I wanted to do. Right, right. Um, so I decided to move to the states for a while, uh-huh. uh, work in a more traditional kind of job, you know, compared to the startup uh, environment. Uh-huh. Um, and uh, yeah, I did that for a while. Um, but for me, if you're talking about a point in time where I knew I wanted to, uh, or I made the, like an active decision, it was after that. No, it was after going through you know a traditional corporate job. Right. right. I, I I I knew at least I could tell confidently. Nah, this isn't what I wanna do. Now that I've tried it, right? And so uh, after that, I, I went back into working with or working at startups, um, usually as uh, the first tech hire or a technical co-founder. Right, right. Uh, and if I may ask, is uh, your background representative of where you actually work in uh, the US? Uh, uh, yes, uh, California, but the in the Northern California, in Southern California, uh, Los Angeles area. Yeah. I see, I see. No? Um, um, so if maybe I can ask, lah, no? some because some IT people will ask, no? but wait, isn't the dream to be uh, like you know out of the country? To some, no, at least to some, no, to out of the country, mm-hmm. uh, working abroad, working in the US. No? Um, what mm-hmm. was what was different for you? Na parang you, you decided na ah, I'll go back to the Philippines and work in the Philippines and work at work at a startup. Parang what what was like? Uh, is it the parang the the corporate rigid structure of a of a corporate or was it more towards like you know you wanted more freedom? Um. So just on the going back to the Philippines, for me it's. Uh, you, you, I, I want to, as as corny as it sounds, I want to help improve the Philippines right. in whatever way I can, right? And it's it's harder to do that uh, if you're outside the country, if you're not experiencing the problems, if you're not experiencing what it is like to live here, right? Um. It was really that. It was um, the Philippines won't change if we're not here, right? Right, right. So at the moment, no, like you said, you've now uh, co-founded and now you've been working with startups already mm-hmm. uh, as co-founder and uh, a CTO as well. No, so mm-hmm. many people will uh, attribute your success already. So, but uh, would you, how do you define your own success? What makes you successful? Um, I I wouldn't call myself a success yet. Uh-huh. Uh, to me, in, in the the startup grind, the success is really all about exiting, right? That's that's uh-huh. the goal. Um, um, as I've said, I've been through different companies, and um, each of those companies failed, right? Um, failed because of different reasons right whether it wasn't the right time to build this thing whether like the market just wasn't there the technology just wasn't there um but after each failure that's just another stepping stone to get you where you are today 
Right, right. Right? Um, and even within a company that's um, continuing to survive, continuing to um, grow itself, um, there's a lot of small failures that you build on top of in learning to get to your company to a certain stage or certain state. Um, so, uh, if you're asking me like what it takes to be successful, um, it's really failing again and again and again and learning from that failure, building on top of it until your next failure becomes a success. Right. If that makes any sense. Yeah, it does. It does. No? Ito, uh, in the startup world, we say, you know, parang, ano, fail fast, right? Uh, yeah. You yeah. Know, fail fast. So uh, you yeah. can succeed faster as well. Um, right. For our audience, lang, no? they, they might have, this might be the first time that they heard about an exit. Maybe you can mm -hmm. just uh, shortly define what an exit is. <laughs> Uh, it's really when uh, your company gets bought out or you are able to IPO or publicly trade your company, obviously giving a return on um, whatever shares you hold on the company, right? Um, that's it. It's where you make money. Right. Yeah. So, uh, so to our audience, no? a lot of the times, we have a sweat capital, Parang basically... Mm -hmm. Um, especially for founders, ito yung uh, ownership nila in entity. Mm -hmm. And so, pag nag-exit sila, so ito ay ibebenta nila sa bigger company. So, mm -hmm. they will buy that. Or, yung sinabi ni Sir Andre kanina, ITO, meaning public. Mm -hmm. So, yung stocks. No? So, yung public yeah. yung bibili ng shares na binigay niyo doon. Mm -hmm. So, doon yun, yun yung ibig sabihin ng exit. No? Right. It's great that you mentioned sweat equity. no. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, yeah, for some people, that's really um, not taking a salary as well. No, not taking a salary in order to build their company, in order to have more runway for their company. Um, but I'd also like to point out that sometimes it means also taking taking less than you know whatever the market rate is, or taking uh, a little bit less money. Um, um, in exchange for a potentially bigger payoff in the future. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah. Um, so right now, you know, uh, what would you say are your next steps? Uh, what are you currently passionate about? Mm -hmm. Great. If you ask me, uh, even five years ago, uh, I would say I was, I would say I'm passionate about just tech in general, passionate about how uh, systems work, how systems are architected. Uh, yeah, but that was five years ago. Um, today, uh, I would say what I'm passionate about is engineering management and process. You know, I like, I've started to like, especially in the past two years, the, um, the people aspect of um, people aspect of engineering. Mm. So that's uh, managing, uh, maybe mentoring uh, developers um, and seeing them grow as developers as well. Seeing them, uh, seeing them have the same uh, reactions uh, as you when when there's something that's very technically elegant or something that's right, very right. cool technically, right? So um, that's what I'm passionate about uh, at least right now. Right. Uh, you did mention a little bit about mentoring, na, no? Um, mm -hmm. But but siguro a CTO then and um, you do are you are responsible about hiring them before mentoring them, no? So correct, uh, correct. You know what? Tips would you like to give for the people that would like to be hired, no? especially soon? Uh, it's almost good. Is it graduating season? I think it, mm -hmm. it, it is, no? So, uh, how is hiring naman or tips for them? Sure. Um, for me, it's more about um, what can you demonstrate as uh, or. Yeah, what can you demonstrate or show as your skill? 
rather than what's written on your CV or in a piece of paper. So what I mean by that is, if you have a GitHub project that you can show uh, where we can take a look at the code, that's much better than putting whatever achievement in your CV, right? Um, because at the end of the day, it's all about what practical things um, can you bring in to the company that's trying to hire you. Um, um, I might also get a lot of uh, pushback on this, um, but uh, um, usually job requirements are just a rough guideline, right? So if you don't meet one or two of the requirements, uh, don't let it discourage you from applying. Um, some of uh, the best uh devs that i've worked with were not in a cs course right They're, they were career shifters and um uh i've seen them do better because they're really passionate about it they came from outside tech and tried to really learn it on their own tried to uh figure it out on their own in order to get a developer job right so yeah i really like uh, career shifters. Right, right. Um, very quick question, because no? mm -hmm. you mentioned this, no, na, they, they shouldn't be too afraid about applying even if you be fit sa job description. Do uh -huh. you write your developers yung, yung pino post sa job posting? Ikaw mismo yung sumusulat or ikaw ba yung final look nun? Or... Uh -huh. Minsan uh -huh. kasi nakakatawa yung ibang uh, JD, no? minsan makikita mo parang Ano, uh, X years of experience, ganyan. Tapos, uh, matatawa ng community. Ay, yung technology na yan, bago pa yan. Hindi ka uh, magkaka-X experience niya. Yeah, in, in general, yes. Uh, I write uh, most of the JDs. Um, this year, this past, maybe past year, I've had a lot of help already um, with some of the people who are helping the manage manage my team with me. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I make sure to read it before I post it uh, to make sure everything makes sense. Right, right, right. So um, for our last question na lang na for, mm -hmm. for um, our audience, na, which is basically, you know, as you mentioned, na you've been in practice uh, for quite some time now. No? So in general, lang, what if you had a chance to advise yourself when you were graduating, mm. what advice would you give yourself? Wow, how that's, to a, uh, that's a hard question. Uh, yeah, uh, hindi to about future, ano no, parang, oy, kaila, magtaya ka dito. Mag-invest ka sa'yo. Uh, <laughs> ganyan, no? Kasi, eh, hindi, hindi magagamit ng, ano natin yan, hindi magagamit ng audience yan. Mm -hmm. More like, you know, career uh, advice. Hmm. Hmm. I would tell my past self to um, if you make mistakes, uh, don't worry. Um, they uh, build you up into you know they build your character uh, and make you what you are in the future, right? So don't don't be afraid of making mistakes. So thank you so much, Sir Andre, no? and to our audience. Yeah. Uh, if you like our content, no, and if you comment to us, you message us. If you have mistakes that you would like also to share, no, and what learnings you you have gotten, always uh, you can message and comment us, no. Um, but before we leave, do you have any last shout out, hiring calls, or anything, uh, Sir Andre? Yeah, uh, firstly, I really enjoyed uh, this talk with you. Uh, always glad to, you know, share my story uh, in, in the hopes that it might, uh, you know, inspire people. Yeah, um, one life lang inspire natin. That's oh, already, I don't know, it could change one life and very important. Maging oh, presidente pa yun or what, oh, <laughs> na part na rin yan ng, ano, eh, like what I said, we want to do what we can to give back and right. to help help our country right um so yeah i appreciate this time uh that you've given me um to the audience um support our app uh support bookie 
uh, just go to bookie.ph. Um, yeah, um, you'll, you'll see our uh, directory there as well as uh, the new um, online ordering system that uh, we built. Um, support Filipino apps. So their uh, link will be placed in the description below, no guys. No? So you can, you should definitely should check it out and support Filipino apps. No? Uh, that's it. Thank you, everyone, and goodbye. Thank you. Bye. And of course, if you like our content, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe button, and notification bell.